India, the second most populous country on this planet. Over 1.3 billion people live here. Every minute, an estimated 25 to 30 people are migrating to Indian cities from rural areas in search of better livelihoods and lifestyles. A national initiative is aiming to transform cities across the country, rethinking and reimagining infrastructure for a better tomorrow. The next frontier, India's smart cities. India's urban population is growing rapidly. Its cities grapple with the mass influx and preparing to be future ready. The idea is to go smart to make a modern, responsive city. Countries abroad have been smartening up their cities by looking for digital solutions. I think that a smart city is a city that takes advantage of all the different ways we have now of rising to the grand challenges that face society, whether you're in Australia, in New South Wales, in Sydney, or in Pune, in India. Waste management, energy, transport, design, data management, all of those things. It's a city that has, has focused on those things and is educating its people to be able to deliver the latest technologies. Indian cities have now joined this global bandwagon. The Smart Cities mission was launched in 2015 to deal with the urban challenges. The Prime Minister, while launching the Smart City mission on 25th June 2015, he said this has to get more from less. So whatever water is available, whatever electricity is available, or whatever resources are available, can we get the most out of it. India is not simply looking at technology to holistically overhaul its urban sprawls. It's also focusing on addressing basic infrastructure needs. So if you think about your life in a city on a day-to-day -day basis, you're basically running into services from the time you wake up to pretty much to the time you go to sleep and even while you're asleep. There are different services at work. At some point it all comes together and that would possibly be a smart city where you have happy citizens and good service delivery. And then it's working for everyone. Cities from across the country have been competing with each other for the Smart City Grant. In the last five years, 100 cities have been chosen. Their prize, a grand sum of nearly 2 billion rupees each to help them become a smart city. So how have the cities used their funds? How are they evolving into model cities for the others to emulate? And can they truly become the smart cities of the future? Surat, one of India's fastest growing cities. It has been focusing on overhauling its transport and housing infrastructure. Surat's public transport system is the envy of most cities and has won a host of awards. The city has one of the longest bus rapid transit systems. 102 kilometers of dedicated corridors which are still growing. This is Hiteshi who depends on the BRTS to reach office every day. A daily commute made easy and economical by the bus app. We put a destination or a two stations. So, all the buses come from the same bus. And it also shows how many times it will come, how many times it will come, when it will reach the same time. The bus is running on four The BRT system uses GPS technology to keep commuters informed about the next available bus. 207 buses, a popular mode of transport for the locals. 
अभी ये जो चार पिछले चार पाँच साल में बी ने बहुत ही डेवलपमेंट किए हैं उसके अलग कॉरिडोर्स लगाए हैं और ट्रैफिक का कोई इश्यू नहीं रहता है तो अभी मतलब सूरत बी आर टी एस इज़ द नेसेसिटी फॉर द सूरत एंड इट चेंज द वे सूरत ट्रैवल्स Helping to popularize the system is the city's mayor Jagdish Patel who makes it a point to use public transport once a week. हमारे यहां एक ज्यादा से ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम यह था कि पॉपुलेशन डेंसिटी ज्यादा होने की वजह से ट्रैफिक का प्रॉब्लम बहुत रहता था पार्किंग स्पेस मिलने का प्रॉब्लम भी ज्यादा था इस सारे प्रॉब्लम को सॉल्व करने के लिए हमने ये सोचा कि पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्टेशन अगर स्ट्रेंथन किया जाए और ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा लोग अगर पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट का यूज़ करें तो प्राइवेट व्हीकल्स की नंबर्स कम रहेगी और इससे ये प्रॉब्लम थोड़ा बहुत सॉल्व होगा ओवर 130,000 पीपल यूज द बीआरटी सिस्टम एवरी डे टू मेक द सिस्टम स्मूथ अ रादर इंट्रिकेट एंड वॉचफुल मशीनरी वर्क लाइक क्लॉक वर्क गुड मॉर्निंग सूरज सिटी लिंग कंट्रोल सेंटर हाँ बोलिए मैं आपकी क्या सहायता कर सकती हूँ आई ऑन एवरी बस इन द सिटी रियल टाइम अलॉन्ग विद इट सी सी टी वी मॉनिटरिंग एंड कस्टमर केयर सेंटर इट हैज अप द गेम बाई मेनी नॉचेज द कमांड सेंटर सुपरवाइजर हैज जस्ट स्पॉटेड टू बसेज बंच टूगेदर इट्स टाइम टू इंटरवीन इसमें देखो दो गाड़ियाँ बंचिंग हो रही हैं पीछे वाली गाड़ी को इंटीमेट करो कि वो धीमे करे अपनी गाड़ी हेलो सूरत सिटी लिंक कंट्रोल रूम में बात करो छो तेरे आगे थ्री फोर्टी टू नंबर की बस जाए तो बने बंचिंग मैसे तेरे स्पीड थोड़ी स्लो कर दो बने वे एक स्टेशन डिस्टन्स का सीटी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इज इम्पोर्टंट एज इज इंडिविजुअल वेलफेयर Surat's burgeoning population of around 6 million people is spread across the city. Over 7% living in shanty towns. But the city is committed to eradicating all slums by the year 2022. One such town is Anwarnagar. Home to over 4000 people living in cramped unplanned houses. Executive engineer Mahesh Jaimalani and his team of municipal engineers are here to map the area. You will be astonished in the year 2001 Surat was slum city as a famous tha. Like in 2001 mein the population residing in slum was around 21% aur pichle 3 4 saalon mein bhi itna kaam hua hai to it will be around 3%. The plan is to raise the slum to the ground and make a modern housing complex for the residents. If this land belongs to Surat SMC, वो उधर ही उनका सर्वे करके प्रत्येक कुटुंब को 30 स्क्वायर मीटर कारपेट एरिया का हाई डेफिनेशन with all the amenities, including uh, either a health center or anganwadi for every 500 DUs. वो बना के हम विदाउट एनी कॉस्ट वी आर गोइंग टू गिव देम और उसका सर्वे की कामगिरी अभी चल रही है लाइक मेनी अदर इंडियन सिटीज सूरत म्यूनिसिपैलिटी इज आल्सो मेकिंग मॉडर्न वेल प्लान्ड अफोर्डेबल हाउसिंग अवेलेबल फॉर द इकोनॉमिकली वीकर सेक्शन ऑफ सोसाइटी प्रवीण एंड पार्वती जिंजाले आर अमंग द लकी फ्यू टू हैव बीन अलॉटेड अ फ्लैट इन दिस हाउसिंग सोसाइटी They have come today with their patron gods to establish them in the flat before they move in with their belongings. Ah, five hundred square bed la surat ma pandar wala the room rahi. To ye to paada kira hai re wo ma to kai maza aave na ya dar no ta haro ma to kahan yaar khare jaye hum na the surat ma kimat bahu se tere ma tere lakh rupya ho to khare de ek je to aap haada five lakh ma na haare so ve ja se. The Jada family have already moved in to their flat. Rajesh Jada works as a diamond polisher. His wife Ranjana takes in stitching assignments from her neighbors. For them, owning a house is a dream come true. 
मैं छोटी थी तब से हम लोग किराए के घर में रहते थे मेरे मम्मी पापा तो मतलब हम लोग को बहुत दिक्कत होती थी मतलब हमारे पढ़ाई भी नहीं हो पाती थी तो मैंने अपनी इच्छा इसलिए रखी कि, कि मेरे लड़की को किराए के रूम में नहीं रहना पड़े और उसकी पढ़ाई पूरी हो The flats are earthquake resistant and have basic facilities like lifts, backup generators and a play area for the children. Surat is smart because you know if you see the city how it functions how it gives its services it is now becoming an intelligent city before something needs to be done it plans in advance so surat has planned things already for next 20 years for next 50 years so uh, that is uh, the basic of a smart city where the city thinks in advance for the next 30 years 50 years Vishakhapatnam in southeast India The city is focusing on creating open spaces and renewable energy Children in this smart school are unraveling the mysteries of solar energy This coastal city gets plenty of sun. Many of the kids have never seen a solar panel and today their teacher has a surprise in store for them. So it is the greatest resource, never ending resource and it's very clean, green and forever and ever it remains like that. So we have to make best use of the sunlight and we have to use the solar energy and we have to in future The city's 144 municipal schools have solar panels on their roofs. Vishakhapatnam gets this sunlight in abundance and it plans to make the most of it. All the government buildings like in our corporation office and in the parking lot and some more of journal offices we have installed uh, a total capacity of 1.5 megawatt uh, solar rooftop uh, uh, initiative the sun in this coastal town is so reliable that the administration has used 580 solar lights to light up the iconic beach road a move that has also helped it slash its bills The city has found innovative ways to trap solar energy panels on water. This is India's largest floating solar plant installed on Mudassar Lowa Lake. The plant generates 2 megawatts of electricity per day. That is enough to power 3000 average households. As a developing country, we have the greenhouse gases that is one of the biggest impact that is going to cause the climate change and this 2 megawatt is a clean energy and this we also call it as the green energy it is as good as equivalent to 1.3 lakh trees so what the tree will do this plant is going to do the plant is powered by 6250 floating panels whose output is constantly monitored by the control room Engineer Mahesh keeps a close track of the systems. He is on the top of the water, so we are have to check each and every uh, day. Is there any connector is falling in the water? A checking of insulation errors. So maintaining of this floating solar plant is not easy compared to ground mounted. The alarm signals that something is wrong. The team is on its way to zero in on the problem. This plant is a complex web of panels. Mahesh springs into action, instructing his team to gear up for fault examination. Each panel is connected with 39 others, and one faulty panel can render the entire group useless. The team is following the emergency drill. Their first port of call, the string monitoring box. with its complicated maze of wires and switches to find the fault line
the problem has been identified. One of the solar panels has developed a fault and needs to be replaced. And the plant has spare panels in its store to cater to times like these. The faulty panel is replaced. The plant will soon be up and running again to its full capacity. Like that, we can minimize the downtime of the plant. Whenever there is problem, we can rectify within half an hour or within one hour so that we can minimize the loss of generation, power generation. While it's challenging to maintain a floating plant, it is also rewarding. The heat emitted by the panels is absorbed by the water below, increasing the plant's efficiency. The solar plant has also helped the corporation save money. What we are observing since last uh, three, four months uh, with the generation of the power, it is functioning to its maximum capacity and it is optimum generation we have been observing that. We are saving the power bills. So we are saving around uh, 2.3 crores of rupees per annum. Vishakapatnam want to go for the green energy in a big way. The city is not just going green through the energy route. It's also putting special emphasis on thoughtfully designing its parks and green spaces. Smart City is another platform for us to bring in more ideas for greening the areas and also making more public spaces available for people along with a component of greening involved in them. Urban planner Vishal Kundra is the brain behind Vishakapatnam's landmark All Abilities Park, created so that children with special abilities can also enjoy a recreational space. What you see now was not the first concept. It actually has evolved you know, over a process, over, I would say in a design phase of about six months. So then we started specially, you know, locating that what type of senses can be located, you know, be it about touch sound, you know, feel. And this park strikes just the right balance. Every day, it comes alive with the laughter of the children it's built for. Uh, so it was a very important message that was necessary to be given to uh, the citizens and of course to ourselves probably that whenever we think of a, of a project, we probably should be thinking in an inclusive way. Ever since it opened, the park has done more than its bit. It's given a playground of hope to the specially abled kids. The park has opened up a new world for them, perhaps changing their childhoods forever. The biggest satisfaction as a designer, you know, when we design a space, is when it gets used to its maximum or optimum functionality. I like this park. There is merry-go-round, slide sliders, there are swings and colorful drawings. I will very happy come here. The All Abilities Park stands out. The joyful faces a testimony to the value of universal inclusion. It's an idea India as a country must adopt. And Vishaka Patnam is already showing the way. Some of the commissioners from other cities have reached out in terms of how did you do it, what was the thought process, and I'm talking about different parts of the country. Now, even while we are doing other parks in the city, you know, a fundamental baseline has become that it should be, you know, 100% universal accessible. The Smart City Mission has commissioned 13 urban parks and gardens across Vishakhapatnam. This is Vuda Park in the making, another park that is changing the way we look at open spaces. 
Vishal Kundra is leading the urban planning team on the ground to take stock of the situation. This is the biggest park under Smart City which has been taken up. It's around 40 acres. So other parks are in the range of you know half an acre to you know maybe close to one acre. Work is going on for the filling of this area for the green trees. So can we look at the landscape plan? So we'll be using the shrubs of different terrains at uh, various levels. Vishakhapatnam's climate is unique. Its air holds high levels of salt and the soil is prone to erosion. Its native plants, therefore, become central to its landscape development by reducing erosion, filtering the air and preserving its natural character. We have been very cautious and sensitive about the type of plant species. So our landscape designers actually have gone into a level of detail in terms of what type of plant species thrive in this kind of a coastal environment. The skating rink is the park's first section to be completed, just ahead of the upcoming National Skating Championship. It's now become the home ground for Vishakhapatnam's international award-winning skaters. It takes time to become a really good skater, to perform nice artistic stunts. I've once already uh, broken my left arm and also my right thumb, but I, still I never give up. The park was conceptualized to fuel the determination of these young guns, transforming the way they practice. When I started skating, I used to do it in a small ring. That time we don't have these two rings. Later they constructed these rings for artistic and one for speed. With the Smart City's mission, giving these young athletes a world-level skating complex. Right now, I've been practicing for my national championship. For that, we have an amazing platform here and we wouldn't let any other state to take back our place in our home ground. We would beat them on our home ground. To truly become smart, our cities will have to be more than just habitats. They will have to foresee and address the challenges of tomorrow, fuse imagination, predictions and technology to reimagine their future. Pune in Western India the city is focusing on technology to enhance the lives of its citizens. At the heart of every smart city is the Integrated Command and Control Center or the ICCC. The nerve center from where the administration can manage the entire city. There are over 2000 smart city elements spread across Pune. And the command and control center is where information from all these elements flow in. These include 1,320 CCTV cameras, 30 flood sensors, 50 environmental sensors, and 136 distress calling systems for citizens, the emergency call boxes, or ECBs. Pune has one of the highest numbers of ECBs installed throughout its length and breadth in the entire country. Hello, Pune Smart City Center. An emergency call box is basically a device which is being provided to the citizens in times of their need or distress, right? So when you press a button on the emergency call box, you get straight away connected to the command and control center. And there have been quite a few successful use cases of this. 12th May, 2019, Dr. Man Singh and his assistant were in their ambulance checking their instruments. शाम को हमें एक इमरजेंसी रिस्पांस सेंटर से हमें कॉल आया और जो पुना में शिवाजी नगर में वहाँ पे एक पेशेंट डॉग बाइट उसको हुआ है और वो पेशेंट वहाँ पे पड़ा हुआ है। The call had come from Smart City's command and control center. The victim himself had punched the emergency button for help. In no time, the team was on its way to the location. Over the last few years, emergency call boxes have become valuable in assisting people. यदि कोई किसी भी प्रकार की इमरजेंसी केस होती है, तो वहाँ पे जो एक गोल्डन ओवर होता है, उस गोल्डन ओवर में पेशेंट को ट्रीटमेंट मिलना बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट होता है। इस केस में यदि रेबिज डॉग का डॉग बाइट उससे होता था तो उसको यदि इमरजेंसी ट्रीटमेंट जो है वो टाइम पे न मिलने के कारण क्रिटिकल कंडीशन उसकी हो सकती थी। 
the team reached the spot to find the injured man lying on his own, unattended. वो डॉग बाइट की वजह से उसको इंजरी हुआ था। वो हमने इमीडिएटली इंजरी क्लीन किया। उस पेशेंट को वहाँ पे फर्स्ट एड का ट्रीटमेंट वहाँ पे किया और उसके बाद में फर्दर मैनेजमेंट के लिए ससुन जनरल हॉस्पिटल में टर्शियरी सेटर में पेशेंट को शिफ्ट कर दिया। Back at the Smart City Command Center, teams are hard at work, deciphering and analyzing the sea of data coming in from the city. Cannot be observed manually. It is practically impossible to observe all the data manually, right? Yes. We have set up a center of excellence for very high-end data and video analytics, where we can run all kinds of analytics on the test bed and help the city departments with all the value which can be extracted from the data which they already have. Prajakta Adhikari is one of the Smart City Fellows analyzing these data sets. So we are a batch of 40 professionals. We were being selected as the first batch of India Smart Cities Fellows. Having our expertise in our own fields, it's been a lot of data that we are trying to digitize and the team has taken almost a time of one and a half months to digitize data sets of almost 350 plus data entries to 400. So we are here at a stage now where we are looking into mapping the city's ingredients. The Smart City Fellows are experts from diverse fields, architects, engineers, urban planners and right now they are deciphering data to create a tool which will help traffic police take faster decisions. How do we decide like, what the right sample size is? The sample size is a function of a lot of... The kind of patterns, the kind of insights which you can really drive is amazing, right? So that's the direction we have been taking. And for, you know, really making sense out of all the data. So we're trying to give a new face or trying to look into a, through a new lens to these old problems. Pune is one of India's busiest cities with the number of vehicles already outrunning number of people. DCP Pankaj Deshmukh is the man heading the traffic police department. Today he has the Smart City Fellows in his office to present the traffic management tool. So can you just tell me the grievances uh, tab. Can you show yes, me and how are you capturing the data? So this was the grievances that we took from the traffic department from uh, the main office and we tried to plot every Twitter grievances that we took for the months on the GIS map with all the geotagging all the locations of them. The tool has the capacity to store data so that will become our historical data where the, they can always go back to an year-long data for the next year they can use for planning coming to a better planning of traffic movement. These are the accident data for the period, for the month month data, and similarly, all of data is coming together. We can try to build a correlation between the accidents, the grievances that are already coming from the masses here. Smartness in policing is the only way to go forward. Unless we use technology, we cannot rely on the policing of the 18th century for the country of the 21st century. So I think. Any kind of smart element which is necessary for policing has to be imbibed in policing. It's a Monday morning. Pune roads are at their most chaotic today. DCP Deshmukh has his hands full, the junctions heavily congested. The city traffic police has recently acquired 80 smart bikes. Bikes that are equipped with upgrades like jammers, GPS systems and public announcement systems to help them perform their duty. Every day, they ensure that this city continues to move smoothly. and the smart bikes are helping them be at the top of their game. आमच्या कामामध्ये एक स्मार्टनेस पण आलेला आहे त्यामुळे आमचा जे कामाची जे गती आहे ते वाढण्यास मदत झालेली आहे त्यामुळे ह्या बाईक आम्हाला नक्कीच फायदेशीर आहेत. The traffic police control room 
constantly monitoring footage from over 1,300 CCTV cameras. DCP Deshmukh has just spotted a traffic snarl. CCTV to control. Jahangir Chowka kade zana raya BMDs var traffic diversion sab. The command center has received orders to flash a traffic detour alert on their variable messaging device screens or VMDs. Pune, using data intelligently and finding new age solutions for old problems. However, every Indian city is unique, with its own distinct character and culture. Urban planners are looking not just at addressing infrastructure needs, but also improving tourist facilities and rejuvenating heritage sites. Varanasi. This city in northern India, which is focusing on restoring ancient heritage. This is a city known for its extravagant temples and carts. The expansive riverfront steps by the Ganga, where the evening Aarti, the song of praise to India's holiest river, is the star attraction. This unique city attracts over six million pilgrims and tourists every year, nearly six times the city's own population. And the city administration is looking at smart solutions to manage visitors. To make the city citizen friendly, to make the city tourist friendly, to try to restore heritage which have been uh, degraded and uh, bring up the cities to standards which a modern city also deserves. That is, to my idea, the smartness of a city in context of Varanasi. The Kashi Vishwanath Temple is the heart of this ancient city. The temple dedicated to Lord Shiva is one of the 12 Jyotirlingas and sees nearly 3,000 devotees every day. Deepak Agarwal is not just the city's divisional commissioner, but also the chairman of the Kashi Vishwanath Temple Trust. Overseeing the building of the Kashi Vishwanath Corridor. That will finally link the temple with the Ganga River. We are creating a Kasi Vishwanath Dham where around 300 odd properties have been acquired and demolished, preserving the old and important structures and heritage importance. And we are creating a direct pathway from the Ganges to the temple, which will provide a world class facility for all the pilgrimage across the world to visit this holy site.
I think I will remember it, yeah. <laughs> for sure. That will stay in my heart. Ça restera dans dans mon esprit et dans mon cœur pour pour toujours. Today, the city administration, the smart city officials and the temple priests are meeting to discuss how they can use technology to offer more services to devotees. On the cards are plans to offer live streaming of prayers as well as personalized ritual packages to the faithful. दूसरा जो है वो काफी इंटरैक्टिव है तो हर की इच्छा होती है कि भी कम से कम अगर हम लोग मणिकर्णिका में उसको नहीं ले जा पाए तो कम से कम उसका अस्थि विसर्जन जो हम लोग गंगा में प्रभावित करें नहीं उसको थोड़ा सा ना अलग करना पड़ेगा इससे अच्छा क्योंकि पूजा पद्धति में और अस्थि विसर्जन दोनों थोड़ी अलग अलग चीजें हैं तो ये दोनों सर्विसेज एक उस पर नहीं हो रही एक रुद्राभिषेक और ये दोनों अलग अलग सर्विस है तो इसमें कोई और को अड़चन तो नहीं है तो इसको फिर आगे बढ़ो out by the river, the 84 ghats of Varanasi are a world by themselves. The riverside, a place to pray, to meditate, to try and understand the idea of India or to simply gaze upon the river flowing by. Now the old ghats are getting a makeover. Photographer Saurabh Singh has been capturing the cards for the last 20 years and has been documenting this change. घाट की भव्यता बढ़ती गई फिर काफी चेंजेज हुए स्टोन वर्क हुए रेस्टोरेशन वर्क हुए एस्थेटिक सेंस वाइज भी बहुत सारे चेंजेज हो रहे हैं क्लीननेस पे काफी ज्यादा जोर है काशी को सूट जब मैं फोटो सूट करता हूँ या कुछ भी ड्राइंग तो मुझे नित्य नए नए आयाम मिलते हैं हमेशा कोई नया एंगल लाइट्स का हो या सन का हो या लोगों का हो या कोई नई कंपोजिशन हमेशा कुछ न कुछ नया मिलते रहा काशी पे The ancient ghats are getting a new makeover. Ashish Srivastava is the principal conservation architect leading the restoration. The imposing Ahilya Bai Mahal is shrouded by scaffolding and work is on to repair years of damage. There are few which we can say, you can call it cosmetic damages, but there are structural damages also because of constant uh, touch of water. So we are actually trying to remove all those piecemeal additions which are not authentic and trying to uh, bring back the glory of the entire garden. The restoration work is being done according to a holistic plan using traditional methods. We are working here on the 18th century structure, so we are working in the same, same uh, technology. So the mortar is also uh, has the got same composition, which is lime, surkhi and, and sand. So we are not using cement in this structure. Varanasi is a living museum. This culturally and historically important city is trying to find a smart balance as it takes steps to modernize while preserving its distinct character. Adding the modern component with our already rich heritage and culture, we, I think we'll be able to make this really, uh, the city really smart city and we'll be able to attract large number of tourists, not just from India, but also from abroad, which will add a great deal of value to the economy of the city and, and generate a lot of employment for the citizens of this city. Four unique cities finding distinct solutions for their problems. These are trailblazers, India's lighthouse cities, a model for others to follow. The future is clear. Governments will have to keep thinking smartly to make the best use of their finite resources and still address their citizens' needs. Uh, when talking about smart cities, for me, it's a city which is healthy, it's livable, it's equitable, it's sustainable. Technology and data analysis will become more widespread 
helping city officials to make good decisions. So a smart city actually needs to uh, kind of uh, uh, use data information uh, in a way which will uh, allow it to do things uh, smartly, be able to anticipate problems ahead of time and try to go and intervene. That is where smartness comes in, right? where you actually, uh, the intellectual smartness or data smartness. Urban planners know that a smart, well-run city will not just raise the happiness quotient of its citizens, but also impact the economy. 70% of India's GDP will come from urban areas. 70% of what happens to climate change will happen because of what we do in urban areas. 70% of you know, energy use uh, is going to happen because of what we do in urban areas. Uh, the lives of citizens, the economic growth and jobs in our country, all is going to be decided as to uh, from what we actually end up doing in these cities. Exploding population and shrinking resources are impacting cities across the globe. India is responding by raising smart cities whose infrastructure is intuitive and inspiring. We selected only 100 cities. It doesn't mean that we don't want the rest of the 4,300 cities to not to become smart. Rather, these 100 cities are like lighthouses. They are like laboratories for developing such kind of models which will prove worthwhile to be implemented in the rest of the cities. The Smart Cities mission is creating the next generation of cities for tomorrow, a big step towards being future ready.